Hello, and welcome to our presentation about CICD is an UFO. So, I'm Zlatan Saric, I'm a senior software developer at Dynatrace in Graz. And by now you might be wondering what a UFO is. I brought one. So, today we're going to talk about this little open source project of ours, which is a really simple way of exposing build, build failures and production problems. So, today I'm just going to quickly go over why it's actually shaped by, uh, as a UFO. Um, so, a little bit of the origin story. Then, um, there's usually this common understanding of how a CI CD should look like and how uh, the UFO can help us there. And just really briefly, uh, we will talk about what's contained in here. So it's really a simple setup. How we use it in our CI CD and kind of let an, like an experiment, I prepared a short interface demo to just show how simple it is. And of course, what value does it bring? So, let's continue. At Dynatrace, we had the problem that um, there was a lack of awareness in build problems. Meaning, somebody is developing something and the branch build is super, super green and then you merge because the PR is also through. And on a mono repository, for example, a build can take up to, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Who actually remembers at exactly that time to check the build if it's green? So what usually happened is, after successful story, developer goes for a coffee, right? And in this case, it really happens that there are 400 developers developing the same code base, meaning a red master or a non-building master really blocks people. So in a really dynamic code base that can introduce a lot of lag. Um, what we then did is, okay, how do we expose this information? Usual CI tools have the UI, we could put it on a screen, but that's just too much information. You just want to know, is it working or is it not working? And if it's not working, did I do it, right? So, what happened is we said, okay, why not just install simple lights showing what the current status is, right? And let's do it in public areas, like the coffee area or uh, the kitchen or wherever developers usually hang out when they're not developing. And that's how the UFO shape came to, came to be, because when you hang something up, and it should be visible from every side, you get a 360 degree view, meaning it looks like a UFO. Um, short on how the UFO helps us. So for a CI CD, and I wrote a square here on purpose, because usually you're talking about continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. So in a pipeline like this, you go through all the steps with different tools. So you use, there's Jenkins, which is an open source tool, there's uh, CircleCI, there's um, I think even paid tools like Atlassian, I think there it's called Bamboo, uh, which helps you for a deployment, right, and your builds. And the steps for a, for a CI CD pipeline is first of all continuous integration. So every time you build something or you code something, it needs to be automatically tested. And after you have your build or your artifact, you need to deliver it somewhere. That being a Docker container, be it a jar, be it whatever you, your product is, to a repository usually where it's available for distribution. So commonly in bigger or in companies, you have three stages, right? You have the development stage, you have the staging stage, also often referred to as pre-prod, and you have the production stage. So the development stage is obvious, it's for us developers. So there we can integration test. We deploy our artifact, or in best case, the CI-CD pipeline deploys the artifact for you, and then you test it. Or it's even better, automatically tested. And 
After that, it goes to the, uh, the pre-prod stage, where then penetration testing is happening, where then load testing is happening, to really um, be sure that when it's going to prod, there won't be any customer impact. And production, of course, is where customers are living at and using your product. Um, so, what does this all have to do with this free open source project, the UFO? Um, it's really open source. You can, everything is available on GitHub. Um, the hull is 3D printed, so even the STL files for 3D printing are available. And you can customize it yourself, basically. Um, it isn't really that much of, of content or hardware in there. It's an Adafruit process board with an 80 megahertz controller, and it has a fully functional TCP IP stack with DNS support. So basically, it's web server ready. Which also suggests of how the UFO is implemented, which is a basic REST interface, making it extendable and compatible with all your build pipelines. All you need is a build pipeline supporting HTTP calls. How do we use it at Dynatrace? So, um, the UFO, this is actually in front of my office. So, what we do is we have several distributed Uf UFOs hanging off the ceiling, at the coffee place, at the table tennis. So, whenever there's one of the services of the corresponding teams failing, you see it's red. So, instead of drinking your coffee leisurely, you should probably head back to your workplace and fix the problem. Um, as you might have noticed, it has two lanes. So, the upper lane is mostly used for build. So, that's where you show your build status, where you show your pipeline status. You can do basically whatever you like with it, but that's the way we use it. The lower lane is for problems in environments. So, in the code base, which is also available on GitHub and freely extendable, um, there is a part which comes with out-of-the-box Dynatrace integration, meaning, um, I don't know if you know, and that's what I'm going to leave it at, Dynatrace is a monitoring tool which detects automatic problems in your environments. So, the UFO then actually shows if there is currently a problem in your production environment. So you can check out the UI and fix the problem before even the customer notices it, which actually happens a lot of, time, uh, a lot of times in our company as we consume ourselves. Um, there are some minor features which are not really mentioning worthy. I just put an example here, which is probably just the original developer playing around. It's blinking the IP address and stuff like that but um, not really um, worth mentioning. So, I have kind of an experiment. I will show you what it can do um, directly here. For that, you will have to bear with me for a minute. So, as you see now, I'm using a simple REST client, which is called Insomnia. It's also openly available um, to show you how it works. 
So basically, um, you can configure it with query parameters. You set up a simple HTTP request to the UFO itself, and you can say, okay, on the top, I want the zeroth and first LED to blink in that HTML, HTML encoded color. Uh, then I want the other leads to uh, be in that color. And when I go right to the back, there's also the possibility to morph colors, there's the possibility to, to whirl them around, there's uh, configuration possibilities how you like. So when I send off, for example, that HTTP request, I get a disco ball. So you can actually do it for parties as well, I guess. Um, so because we're in Austria here, we can also have it rotating the Austrian flag. Or for that matter, the Italian flag. And now, <laughs> again a little bit, I guess, back to the company, but that's one of the examples I also found, is our Dynatrace colors. So also those leads are manageable, and if you change, for example, in the STL file, if before you print it, you can also um, have a different four-colored logo, whatever you like. Um, so, as you have seen, um, the usage is really reduced to setting HTTP uh, sending HTTP requests. I have to reconnect to the Wi-Fi, I'm sorry. So it's a really simple tool to give a lot of value. So what value do you think it might bring? It's basically leads and a microcontroller, right? So what we noticed is that the failed time of our main branches is heavily reduced because it's exposed. So it's not only exposed to you, but also to your colleagues, right? And it helps you um, be more stable in your main branches. It helps you be actually aware that whatever I merge, it has to be stable, it has to be green. Um, it on a psychological level, has a lot of impact to mindset change, meaning I will maybe test my things twice before actually merging them to master. So, um, and also, when there's something red, everybody wants to fix it, of course, because it doesn't look really nice. Um, what I put also here on the slide is how Dynatrace actually shows problems. So if you see this in Dynatrace, the second lane would be red, and then you can actually track your prob problem to the source, even to the source code, um, where it is at. Um, for the last part, I've prepared a video, which is from us, and kind of promotes the, the UFO a little bit. Um, it was just... How would I put it? It's basically everything you've heard now, but in a more funny way presented. So, have fun. <coughs> ah, good. A visitor. Are you experiencing build problems? Is your pipeline Red all the time? Are you not able to deploy for hours or even days? We had the same problem until we created the UFO. <laughs> Wi Fi, REST, HTTP, S, low energy, dual core CPUs, and 34. High intensity RGB LEDs. Our pipeline was sometimes broken for hours. Now that the UFO 
is visualizing the state of it. We were able to bring down the time to fix the pipeline to minutes. Keiner bemerkte, dass die Pipeline gebrochen war. Wir konnten nicht nach Production deployen. Ich persönlich musste das zu den Dev-Teams eskalieren. Und die mussten dann erst die Pipeline fixen, bevor wir wieder nach Production deployen konnten. Honestly, we need to change our culture. Production readiness has to be in the hands of developers. They own the code, no one else. This is Paul. Paul hasn't slept very well last night and is longing for coffee. Unfortunately, Paul has not tested his code properly and checks in breaking changes. Now, normally in such a situation, the whole pipeline would fail. Operations would need to track down the error manually. Every single developer would be impacted. Fortunately, there is the oof. So let's figure out what happens next. As you can see, the real-time visualization of the pipeline state has already triggered a beneficial response. Paul is immediately handling the situation by fixing the problem. So um, they put some effort in there, and even if you know the guys, it's even more funny. Um, yeah, so that's basically our small open source project, um, the UFO. If you want to know more about the UFO, you want to know more about Dynatrace in general, um, please visit us at our booth. And with that, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak here and go over to questions. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, the problems are Paul. Ah, um, so the question was if we're um, pushing the pipeline states to the UFO uh, instead of polling them. Yes, we're pushing them to the UFO. Um, we at Dynatrace, for example, we have innovation day projects, meaning you have one day to do what you like and the UFO is a really popular target. So what we did there is basically this polling mechanism as a service, because you can poll the uh, pipeline states and intermediately push them to the, to the UFO, right? And then you can also, I don't know, section the UFO depending on your services or whatever you like. The problem, so the integrant, integrated problem, Lane, I mentioned for Dynatrace, it's polling the state from the, from the problem interface. You define the API key, you define the URL, and it's polling it itself. But the idea is that the UFO should stay configurable, and you should um, be able to extend it however you like to do it. Is that answering your question? So the question was if we, um, if we could enable the UFO for pull request uh, builds as well. Um, of course, you can put it on each build or configure it in your pipeline, whatever pipeline definition you use, be it Groovy, be it YAML. Usually YAML also has some crypting interfaces. Um, however you like. Um, the thing is why we did not do it is uh, on PR builds, the developer is usually there. <laughs> so when you have PRs, 
It's like I'm developing something, so somebody's reviewing, and I'm waiting for him to be done, so I'm actively checking the state, and I'm actively checking the build state. But our problem were the CI deployment stages, meaning when hardening deployment fails, because what you do is, okay, you initial, in, initialize the, the deployment to hardening, and you forget about it, because you wouldn't wait a stare for half an hour onto a screen until it's done, right? So uh, that's like visualizing those background processes, which are usually, usually highly automated. Is that answering the question? If there are no more questions, thank you for your attention and hope to see you at the booth.